This week we're going to do a little more exercising with recursive functions, but we'll keep it a bit shorter than last week. We're going to recursively iterate through an object combining values. Just one function. It's actually quite straightforward, but takes a bit to wrap one's head around. Let's start with an array. How about we use the top 15 grossing films in the US for 2018 sorted by studio. Here's our object. It's, uh, huge. Sorry. This is a rare time where I'm going to paste things instead of typing them because, trust me. Here we go. The code to sort through this and sum all those hundreds of millions of dollars into a single amount is really short. Let's write it down and then we'll go over it. Here's the entire thing. It helps not to have caps lock on. All right, there we go. Let's save it and try it. Yep, yeah. so if you give it just a number here, it's just gonna return that number. However, if you type your actual variable name correctly, then you get the number you're looking for. So, how does this work? Well, the first thing it does is check the value we passed in. Let's actually look at the else block first, here. It's what happens at the bottom of the chain. If the value is not an object, we just return it. Obviously, this function would break down quickly if the data was formatted incorrectly, for example, if it had a bunch of strings or booleans in it. But in order to keep this simple, we've made sure our data is going to work correctly. This means the only thing that will ever be returned is a number. Okay, now let's take a look at the meat of this function. If the value we're passing in is an object, this line here, we get all the values for the object and recurse the function on each of them. That happens here. This dives deeper and deeper into the object until it hits a number, and it'll work no matter how far you nest objects as long as the most internal value is a number. The for of loop is doing a ton of work here, controlling the recursion. Let's talk about what's actually happening when we run the function down at the bottom. We send it the movies2018 object. It detects that the object is, well, an object. It runs object.values to get the values within that object, right here. What are those values? They're an array. They look like this. This is actually going to generate a bunch of arrays, but we're going to look at the first one. So specifically, that's an array full of objects. Neat. So we can use for of on that array and iterate through each of them. We declare this top level value, sum, set it equal to zero. Now we start looping. So next we recurse the function, running it on the first object in the array above. Subval here would be equal to this Disney object. Once we do that, we get this second array, which looks like this. So, aha, that object is also an object. So we run object.values on it, and we get this array. Sorry, I have to keep nesting all of these console logs. Now we're talking. Those are numbers, we can just return them. We create a final for of loop that operates on that array, and each time our function runs now, it encounters one of those numbers, so it returns the number, and each of those get added to the function's sum value, which then gets returned. But remember, we're still in the first for loop, which is iterating over the array that includes all of the studio objects. So the total sum value we returned in the array with all the numbers is just one of several loops of that top level for of loop. I know this is getting confusing, but this is the nature of recursion. Here's a simplified step-by-step. -step. Movies 2018 is an object, right here, sum movies 2018. We see that it's an object. We create this top-level variable of sum equals zero. Then we get the value of its sub-objects. Disney is an object. That's the first loop here. So now we go back up here. We see it's an object. We create a new sum variable in a recursive loop on the second level and set that to zero. Then we get the values of those sub-objects. That's this array. These five values are numbers. So we create a third level sum variable, set it to zero, iterate over the values of that array. Again, that's this. But this time, each of these is returning the value, which gets attached to our third level sum variable. When that whole loop finishes, we kick back to the second level sum variable, 
and add the entire return sum to that. So that's the return sum from the Disney object is being stored in the second level sum. We then proceed to the Fox object. We repeat through all of the studio objects, adding all of their return values to the top level sum. And then we return the top level sum, which gives us our total. Now, as I mentioned in the last tutorial, I find this stuff confusing. That's all right. It's fine to be confused, but the key is to not get frustrated and give up. Human brains are really flexible. The longer you work with certain concepts, the more ingrained they become. Try playing around with the object and the function. You'll break stuff, but that's the point. Understanding why something is breaking is the best way to learn how it works. I think that's it for recursion, at least for now. Next week I'll be exploring one of two subjects, and I'd love for you to vote in the comments. Would you prefer A, an introduction to Express.js and the latest Express Generator scaffolding, or B, a gentle introduction to Facebook's GraphQL language? In either case, it's likely to spawn at least a few more tutorials after the first one. Got a preference? Leave a comment. Even if it's just a single letter response, it'll be useful for me. Again, A for Express, B for GraphQL. See you next week.